the next step in our synthesis requires us to precipitate zinc sulfide from our zinc sulfate solution. So what I'm going to do is pour out about 100 milliliters of this solu sulfate solution to this beaker and then adjust the volume to 150 milliliters. Uh, after doing some rough calculations that should give me roughly about a 0.5 molar solution of zinc sulfate and then we'll take this setup outside and bubble hydrogen sulfide gas through it. So here's my gas generating setup. Uh, here we have an Erlenmeyer flask to which we'll add the iron sulfide and then introduce hydrochloric acid through the syringe. That will make uh, hydrogen sulfide gas which will travel through this tube to this stage which is just uh, distilled water. It serves to wash the hydrogen sulfide gas of any HCl vapor or fumes. And then it will come up and go through this bubbler into our sulfate solution which I have a stir bar in and we'll be stirring while this is going on. All right, I filled the flask with iron sulfide powder that we previously made, and I filled the syringe up with hardware store hydrochloric acid. Next, I'll start to drip the hydrochloric acid onto the iron sulfide, and we should get uh, gas production. I've also uh, added some saran wrap on this beaker to prevent anything from blowing in here, because since we are outside, and it should also help to keep the hydrogen sulfide gas in contact with the surface of the solution for a little bit longer. We'll turn stirring on. As you can see the solution is turning a little bit cloudy so we're actually precipitating zinc sulfide now. While this is running I should mention that hydrogen sulfide is a pretty nasty poison and you should minimize your exposure to it. That's why we're doing this outside and not inside and it also smells terrible. The smell of rotten eggs so be aware of that and minimize your exposure. It's been about 45 minutes since the start of gas production. As you can see the I'm getting a bubble every couple of seconds. So I'm going to wait about 15 more minutes and then disassemble the apparatus and we'll filter the zinc sulfide from the solution. So after gas production has stopped, you can uh, disassemble the apparatus and get ready for vacuum filtration. When you're filtering this, be very patient and slowly pour the solution onto the center of the filter paper. If you don't do this, it'll take you forever to filter this since this is such a fine suspension of zinc uh, sulfide particles. After filtering you should have a nice filter cake. Uh, I'm going to put this back on there and wash it several times with distilled water.
After washing the zinc sulfide several times, I just let the vacuum pump pull air through it to partially dry it, and then I transferred it to this watch glass, and I'm going to put it in my lab oven and let it dry. So after letting the zinc sulfide dry in the oven for about an hour, I was uh, left with 3.3 grams of amorphous zinc sulfide. And this stuff has no luminescent properties whatsoever at this point. And I'll just show that to you. Get the lights. As you can see that there's no fluorescence and there's definitely no phosphorescence at this time. So what we're going to do is dope the zinc sulfide with copper and see what that does. Other dopants that are popularly used are silver and manganese and I'll show you those later. But today we're going to take a look at how to dope it with copper ions. So what I have in this test tube here is uh, 0.1 grams of zinc sulfide. What I'm going to do next is crush this up with a glass rod and then we're going to add a couple of mil 0.3 milliliters of this 0 0.001 molar copper chloride solution. And then we're going to dry it and fire it We're using a propane torch. I've filled this pipette with a 0 0.001 molar solution of copper chloride to the 1 milliliter mark. And then I'm going to add 0.3 milliliters to this test tube in which I have 0.1 grams of zinc sulfide powder that I've crushed up with a glass stirring rod. All right. And you can do this without having if you don't have a pipette, you can just make a dilute solution of copper chloride and drip small amounts and onto your uh, zinc sulfide and experiment to see what gives you the best effect. By the way this corresponds to about a 0 0.03 percent copper ions to zinc ions. So I'm just going to stir this up and then use a heat gun to boil away the solution or evaporate the solution. After the zinc sulfide is dried again, we can proceed to the next step where we f use a propane torch to fire this. And I'm just going to heat it in the tip of the torch for about a minute and a half. And that should be enough to activate our phosphor. I'm going to grab a test tube holder. So I have the torch going. I'm going to turn it up. And we're just going to heat this for about a minute and a half. Just get all the moisture out. That's whatever's left. Most of it. I'm going to turn the light off so we can. As you heat, the uh, zinc sulfide will turn a yellow color and eventually it should begin to glow under the heat. And what's happening here is we're crystallizing the zinc sulfide 
into the wart side phase and, uh, and some of it's zinc blend and that's what we need for it to be phosphorescent but I'll just continue heating this for another 10-15 seconds After letting the test tube cool, I just dumped the zinc sulfide out onto this dark colored paper and I'm going to turn the lights off and see if there's any reaction to my UV flashlight. I haven't even shown the light yet, but I can already see that the material is phosphorescing. And here's what it looks like with the UV on. It's a pretty bright green fluorescence and if I turn this off you can see that it phosphoresces sorry the camera doesn't pick it up too good but it's still pretty bright